starring Joan Bennett in So Red the Rose on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clayton Collier. Tonight, Cavalcade brings you one of Hollywood's loveliest young stars, Joan Bennett, as Paulette Bedford in Stark Young's colorful and romantic story of the Old South, So Read the Rose. By special arrangement with Paramount Pictures, DuPont presents a radio version of the exciting screenplay and best-selling novel on the Cavalcade of America. Joan Bennett in So Read the Rose. <laughs> spring afternoon of the year 1861. On the veranda of the plantation house of Portobello on the Mississippi, two southern gentlemen are taking their ease. The elder is Malcolm Bedford, master of Portobello. The younger, handsome, more careless in his dress, is Duncan, a distant cousin, proud, too, of the name of Bedford. As our play opens, they are joined by Sally Bedford, mistress of Portobello. I hope you gentlemen don't mind if I join you for refreshment. Quite the contrary, my dear. Our cousin Duncan persists in talking about what we should do with next year's crop. <laughs> oh, Duncan, I'm ashamed of you. Talking business on an evening like this. Why, that's Yankee style. <laughs> Sooner or later, we're going to have to wake up and adopt some Yankee customs, cousin Sally. Duncan. You better not let Ballet hear you talking like that, Duncan. She thinks we ought to declare war on the Yankees. Well, Ballet's young yet. She thinks war is romantic. Well, isn't it? Cousin Sally, have you ever been present at the amputation of a leg wounded by grape shot? Duncan, such talk before a lady. I don't think I'm going to like having you as a son-in-law at all. <laughs> well, Sally, don't mean half what you say, Duncan, and neither do you. Ah, here come the refreshments. Yes, sir. The ones with three mint sprigs has double whiskey, gentlemen. Uh, I'll bring along some tea for Miss Sally. Thank you, William. Oh, uh, William, have you seen Mr. Pendleton about? Uh, no, sir. He done rode off to some meeting or other up the river. It seemed they're getting together some kind of a volunteer militia. Militia? What's this about the militia, William? Why, Valet, how lovely you look. Thank you, Cousin Duncan. Now then, William, what's this about a militia? Well, I don't know, Miss Villette. They say they're fixing to ride again the Yankees. How perfectly thrilling. Oh, I do hope the fighting breaks out soon. Villette, well, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. And you'll be in there too, Duncan, when the time comes. I pray God it'll never come, Villette. Oh, everybody's so serious. Goodness, you think I'd said something terrible. Well, you did. Now, don't you children start quarreling again. Well, there's Mr. Pendleton turning into the drive. Why, there's a whole troop of them. It must be the militia. Mr. Pendleton's riding at the head of them. Good evening, folks. Miss Vallette, Miss Sally. Mr. Pendleton. Gentlemen, good evening. Mr. Pendleton, you've been holding something from me. Where did you get that handsome uniform? Oh, that's my old Texas militia get-up. I brought it along in my trunk. I thought I might have needed it before I got back home. And I was right. What do you mean, Pendleton? I thought something's been fired on, Duncan. Something? You sure? News just came. The boys and I are making the rounds of the county, raising the militia for the fighting. I see. Uh, ain't you coming along with us, Duncan? No. No, I'm not. Never heard of a Bedford shirking his duty before, Duncan. Oh, he doesn't mean it, Mr. Pendleton. Of course you're going with them, Duncan, and you're going to bring back a Yankee scalp just for me, aren't you? Now, now, Bellet, don't talk like that. We've got no quarrel against the Yankees. They're Americans the same as we are. Those hotheads over in South Carolina want us to see that's their business. But as long as Mississippi's still in the Union, my duty is to the United States. And to think I let myself get practically engaged to you, Duncan. Well, anyway, we was hoping to pick up a few mounts from your stables to pack our supplies, Duncan. Well, you're welcome to them, Pendleton. Yes, I reckon the Bedfords raised good, brave horses anyway. And it. And if I may trouble you for my locket I gave to you, Duncan. But Valette... Please, Duncan. I'm serious. As you say. Mr. Pendleton, I meant this locket for a fighter. A real man. 
So if you'll accept it from one whose prayers are going into the battle with you. Well, Miss Valletta, I, I hardly know what to say. Don't say anything, Mr. Pendleton. Just kill as many Yankees as you can. Ma'am, if I wasn't so mad at them, I'd be feeling sorry for those Yankees right now. <laughs> Just come in from Vicksburg, Miss Vallette. This letter's for you. It's for Mr. Pendleton, I'll bet. Fetch me the letter opener from over there, William. Yes, sir, Miss Vallette. William, whatever is all that singing back of the house? That's young Mr. Edward, Miss. He's training some of the field hands for the fighting. Field hands? For the fighting? Yes, sir. He says if he gets a call for the army, we'll be needing them to protect us here at Portobello. Uh, that is, if the Yankees get to Vicksburg. Well, too ridiculous. The Yankees will never get to Vicksburg. Go and ask Mr. Edward to come here to me. I want to talk to him. Yes, Miss Vellet. Morning, Vellet. Morning, Mother. Morning, Father. Morning, my dear. Here's a little package that came with the letter, Vellet. William brought it to me by mistake. Oh, thanks, Father. I'll open it when I finish the letter. Who is it from, darling, Mr. Pendleton? <laughs> no, from Charlie Tolliver, and it sure is amusing. Listen to this, Mother. Dear Vellet. I know you would love me if you could see me in the fine blue pants I borrowed off a Yankee gentleman the other day. As he was about seven foot tall, I can truthfully say that my new pants cover an honest heart. <laughs> Isn't that just like Charlie? Go on, darling. What did you want to see me for, Vallette? Now, Edward, sit down. I- I'm reading a letter from Charles. Oh, what does old Charlie say? Now, you can read it yourself later. Oh, read me the rest of it, Vallette. Well, that's about all there is amusing in it. Then there's a postscript. Mother. What is it, honey? Mother, listen. Haven't time to write you a new letter as we're in the midst of a retreat from Shiloh. Pendleton is no longer with us. He wanted you to have the locket back. To give to some other soldier. Said it made him fight so brave. It might make a real good soldier win the war. He died with your name on his lips, fella. The locket. That's what the package has in it. Poor Poor boy. Oh, well, it I, I think I want to be alone for a while. Sis, you let the locket. I never want to see it again. Pendleton. My best friend. And now this disaster at Shiloh. Do you realize what that means, Dad? I'm afraid I do, son. Poor Relit. I wonder how Duncan will take this news. Well, Duncan's all right, Sally. You'll see. Men like him have to know in their minds what they're fighting for. Well, I think I'd better go and try to comfort Bellet if I can. If I can be of any help, I'll let you know, ma'am. Father. Yes, son? Will you give me the little bay mare? Of course, Edward. So, you're going to? I've got to, Father. Without saying goodbye to your mother? Yes. Don't you think that's best? Yeah, I think it is, son. Well, goodbye, Father. Goodbye, son. God be with you. Oh, Malcolm. Where's Edward? Uh, he, uh, he went out. Uh, I was well left. He's better. He asked me to bring the locker, Charles, and back. Oh. Where is it? It was right here on the table. I think Edward took it with him. Oh, then... But he can't. You shouldn't have let him. He's only a boy, Malcolm. War has a curious effect on people, Sally. It makes them grow up quickly. Yes. Yes, I... I knew I couldn't keep him any longer. May I sit here beside you, Cousin Bellet? I can't very well prevent you, Cousin Duncan. I was sorry to hear about Paul Pendleton. You're sorry. You stay here safe at Portobello. 
feeling sorry. While men are dying in the Cumberland. Still sending the lambs off to slaughter, aren't you, Valet? First Pendleton, and then your baby brother. Edward went because he saw his duty. I had nothing to do with it. You helped him to see his duty, didn't you? With the dead man's locket. You know, I'd be careful how I handed that locket around if I were you, young lady. Seems to be bad luck. I didn't even know about the locket. He, he just took it. Valet, you know it's women like you who make wars. With your blasted souvenirs and mementos and your everlasting cotton and anything with two legs and a uniform. It's not true. Well, you say that, but you know I'm speaking the truth. And Edward, you started on him when he was just a little boy. Showing him the pictures and the books and praying for the day when you'd be bragging about your younger brother and his fine uniform. You're a liar. Bloodthirster, that's what you are. A Yankee scalp. That was your price for your love when you gave it to Pendleton. Liar. Truth hurts, doesn't it? You're a liar, Duncan. Liar. 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 You are listening to So Read the Rose, starring Joan Bennett on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Eighteen sixty-three, the disaster at Shiloh. Lee marches northward to patch Johnston's tragically decimated forces in the Cumberland. Stonewall Jackson, dead of his wounds at Chancellorsville. Then, the news that strikes the very heart of the South. Vicksburg. Vicksburg has fallen, and Sherman is marching to the sea. With the passing of those years of war and desolation, our play continues. At Portobello, her plantation home near Vicksburg, Mississippi, Valette Bedford, played by Joan Bennett, is standing beneath the portico. A wagon draws up the drive, and a man helps a weeping woman down from the seat. Dunk, <laughs> Mother, what is it? Oh, Valette. Darling. What is it, Mother? Dunk, what is it? Look under the canvas in the back of the wagon, if you feel strong. Edward. It's Edward. I knew it. He's come home, Valet. My little boy. Your baby brother. Valet. Father's I... gone. And Edward. Doctor. We're all alone now. We all need each other. Let's not be bad friends any longer. My husband and my son. Two of the finest men who ever lived. It's not right, Valet. Duncan was right all along. Only we wouldn't listen to him. Valet, please don't. We wanted our men to be brave and fight. For what? To welcome them home in a bundle of canvas. In the back of a dirty old wagon. William. <laughs> That's the glory we encouraged our men to fight for. Come, Mother. William and I will help you up the stairs. No, Valet. <laughs> You wait. William, you go with Miss Sally. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. there now, oh, Miss Sally. Don't take on, sir. William, you tell the groom to saddle the gray gelding right away. Yes, sir. I'll do that, sir. Duncan, you aren't going to leave us. You can't leave us now. now I'm going, Valet. To fight. Oh. There's the lucky, sir. Edward had it clutched in his hand when they found him. Would you like to have the locket back, Duncan? You were the first to have it, you know. They're left. I want you to have it, Duncan. Always. Oh, darling. But don't I... go, Duncan. Now that we're friends again, I, I can't bear the thought of you leaving me. You did grow up after all, didn't you, Valet? My poor little Valet. I'm not going to say goodbye to you, Duncan. I can't. I know now how Mother felt when she said goodbye to Father. Listen, my darling. If you know that, you can do anything. Believe me. I do believe you. That's better. Here comes William now. Leading the Greg Gelding. The groom's ain't there, Mr. Duncan. 
They'll all be leaving. We'll be left alone. All alone. You let those stirrups out a bit, will you? Yes, sir. Never you fret, Miss Burlett. Y'all won't be all alone. Not so long as old William lives. Thank you, William. Now, I'll take away. Yeah. Well, Burlett. Goodbye, Duncan. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Duncan. We'll be waiting for you to come back, Duncan. Mr. Duncan makes a fine-looking soldier, Miss Burlett. You must be mighty proud. Proud of him, William, yes. And ashamed of myself. sitting here in the dark. I was afraid to light the candles. You didn't come back for so long. I keep hearing rifle shots. Real near. They aren't as near as all that, Mother. There. Now that's more cheerful, isn't it? Yes, it's better. With the light, I reckon. What did they see in town, Villette? They say the troops are headed straight this way. Our house will be in Yankee territory before long. I was so worried about you on the road. I told you they're not that close yet, Mother. There. There it is again. Listen. You're right, Mother. Oh, I wish I knew what to do. If only Duncan were here, he'd know what to do. We don't even know whether Duncan's dead or alive. Do you realize that? Maybe soon... It won't matter to us anymore. Mother, it's not like you to talk that way. What's that? Someone at the door. Put out the candle, Mother, quick. <sighs> Mother, go and get William. I'll look outside. Oh, well, it. Don't. Feel it. Don't let him find me. We're still angry. Mother, get William, quick. The Yankee soldier. He's wounded or something. Can you stand on your feet, Yankee? Uh, let me come in, William, please. I'm begging you. Well, yes, sir, mister. Come up the drive. Please, mister. Get me sure. Come into the house. Here. I'll help you. William. Yes, sir, Miss Billy. Mother, light the candle again. What is it, Billy? Never mind now. William, help me get this man to the library. We'll put him on the couch there. Yes, sir, Miss Billy. I can hand him a little. Billy! Yes. Have you gone crazy? He's a Yankee. They'll kill us, too, if they find him here. Close the door after you, William. And get warm water and muslin for his wound. Yes, ma'am. Billy! You turn him right over to the soldiers. If you don't, I will. Mother, if we were a Yankee family and that man were Duncan. Well, Mother. You're right, honey. Yes, you're right. Open up in there. Oh. Open it up. Anybody in there? Open up. That's, that's them now. Don't worry, Mother. Who is it? This Alabama man. Open up the can't wait all night. What is it, gentlemen? We're looking for a Yankee prisoner that got loose. We've seen him coming this way. We'll have to search the house. What? Well, I've never been so insulted in my life. You don't think the Bedfords would hide Yankees, do now, you? Now, look, ma'am, I haven't got time to explain to you, Dee, that we don't trust you, but orders is orders. What's the matter, ma'am? What's going on, Joe? Duncan, it's you. I'm sorry, Valet, but these men are acting under military orders. You'll have to let them in. All right, Duncan. Take them upstairs and let them start searching there first. Thank you, Valet. All right, men. Follow me up. Yes. Valet, what are you going to do? I'm going to warn the Yankees. Stand under the covers, Yankee. Here, this is my brother's jacket. Put it on. They'll hang me for sure if they find me. I'll tell them you're my brother. But they'll hang me, Miss, for sure. Not in this gray jacket, they won't. Here, get into it. Yes, thank you, Miss. Thank you. As soon as they've gone, we'll tend your wound. They're lit. What's this? Who's that on the couch? Oh, Duncan. Please. 
She's just a boy. She's too young to die. Yankee, what's your regiment? Come on, how many were there? Answer me. Oh, no, no, you're joking me. Scouting troop of the advance guard. Duncan, stop it. He's wounded. What are you doing in that gray jacket? I gave it to him. You did? Oh. All right, Yankee, get it off and put on your own. Duncan, what are you going to do? We'll turn him over to our men, of course. But they'll hang him. They're left. This is war. But you can't send this boy to his death. Oh, you've changed, Duncan. You changed, Valette. I remember you making a man promise to bring your Yankee scalp. That was... That was before I knew I loved you, Duncan. Duncan, you'll save him. Please, please, for me. Come in. Sergeant Stoke reporting, Captain Bedford. We've searched the house but didn't find him. Hey, who's that? This is Miss Valette's brother, Edward. He was sent home wounded and he's just beginning to recover. I see. Well, hadn't we better get started, Captain? Right away, Sergeant Stoke. Goodbye, Edward. Get well soon and join us where the third Mississippi is encamped. Well, Valette. Goodbye again, Duncan. And thank you. <laughs> I wonder if it's too late for everything. Oh! All right, men. The soldiers again. We're the house. Maybe Duncan's with them. He'll know what to do. It's not Duncan. It's the Yankees. Then it's the Yankees! They won't harm you, ladies. Just tell us who those soldiers were in here a few minutes ago. But... but this is... Go on, speak up fast, ladies. This is the Union Army you're talking about. Yankees! Who's that there on the bed? Oh, please. Take that sheet off them. That's right. Oh. Rebel soldier. Dead as a doornail, too. Well, quite a nest you have here. We'll soon fix that. He's one of your own men, a Union soldier. In a Confederate uniform. But it's true he was wounded. We tried to save him. Yeah, so I see. Well, ladies, under the circumstances, I have only one choice. I don't make these decisions, you understand. They're made for me. What are you going to do? I'll give you just two minutes to get your things out of here. Start packing. Oh, two minutes. I'll be generous and give you five. Corporal Mason. Yes, sir. When I give the signal, you're to set fire to this house. Don't let your men leave till it's burned to the ground. These sticks are fairly dry, Mother. <laughs> My daughter, fetching wood, and us living in a slave cabin. I never thought I'd live to see the day. It's a roof of our heads, Mother. And when Duncan gets home, we'll build another house. Duncan's not coming home, child. We've got to face that. We'd have heard from him long before now. I know he's alive, Mother. I feel it. We'll build a small house. There'll only be three of us now. We still got the land, and I'm strong. Mother. What is it, Valley? Duncan. I hear Duncan's voice. Oh, you're all tired out, honey. It's just your imagination. But, Mother, I did. I distinctly heard Duncan's voice. For heaven's sake, Valley, close the door. Makes the stove smoke. Ellis! Wait. Now I hear something. Listen. Ellis! Ellis! Mother, it is. It's Duncan. Ellis! He's over there. See, that over across the brook. Here we are, Duncan. Over here. 
Mother, hand me that shawl. I'm going to meet him. Here, darling. Hurry. Duncan. 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 Oh, darling, Duncan. It is you. Really, you. Duncan. Oh, Valet. Take me in your arms, darling. Quick. Oh, darling. So when I saw the house was burned down, I thought I'd lost you forever. They're left for you, Duncan. And that's all that We'd like you to meet our star, Joan Bennett. <laughs> Miss Bennett, as spokesman for the Cavalcade Players, may I tell you how much we've enjoyed having you as our guest star. Thank you, Mr. Collier. It has been fun doing Sir Red the Rose on the radio. I liked it immensely, both as a novel and a picture, and I hope the Cavalcade audience who know it as a book and a film liked our play tonight as much as I liked playing. Well, we hope so, too, Miss Bennett. As you know, our show next week is also based on a bestseller and a hit picture. It's Edna Ferber's great novel, Cimarron, and our star is Irene Dunn. We're doing the program in Hollywood, Miss Bennett, and we hope you'll drop around and see us. Well, if I'm back next week, I will, Mr. Collier. In any event, you can count on me as a listener. We'll do that. And again, our thanks for tonight's performance. Remember, next week, the Cavalcade of America stars Irene Dunn in our radio version of Cimarron, the powerful story of the Oklahoma land rush by Edna Ferber, which was a bestseller when it was published and a great motion picture when it was produced by RKO. At this time, we would like to remind our listeners that now is the time to join the Red Cross in its membership drive for 1941. Your Red Cross button is a badge of honor for humanity and national defense. Supporting Miss Bennett on tonight's production of So Red the Rose was Jeanette Nolan as Sally and Carl Swenson as Duncan. The orchestra and the original musical score was under the direction of Don Vuri. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.